Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is part one of a two-part video, again concerning the wonderful Procunior tapping attachment, tapping head, and I've done a couple videos on this, and I'll put the links down in the description if you have not seen those, but uh, this allows you to power tap, but I am going to do a cutaway. I mentioned that in another video that I would like to find an old beat up one that I could cut apart because this one really is way too valuable to, to cut up and uh, it, it works great so I don't want to mess with that although I have had it apart and shown how it's work, how it works in another video but I have this older one taken apart but I'm going to put it back together and uh, then take it apart again and show you what I'm going to cut apart hopefully so that you can see and understand the internal workings even better than what I showed you in other videos. Let's begin! In case you do not know what a power tapping head for your drill press is I'm going to cut away right now to a very short clip taken from one of my earlier videos with this in actual use tapping holes and how it reverses. I have three other videos regarding tapping heads. You may wish to watch them. Here are the titles. This is the patent drawing by Mr. Procunior from 1929 or so. And that shows the internal workings. I'll put the still of that at the end of the video where I put still pictures. But this was an ill-fated attempt here to show you an exploded view of the whole thing, including the planetary system, which is employed for the reversing mechanism. I'm going to put it back together right now so I can talk about what it looks like on the outside and then again take it apart one more time. By then I'm getting pretty good at it. Okay, these are both number one procuniers. That's the size, and they will tap up to a quarter inch in aluminum. This is the one, I've had this for years. This is the one that I bought recently, also a number one, much, much older, and it has a different type of shank or attachment for a drill press than what this one does. This has a straight shank, so it can be held in any Jacobs chuck very easily. They were also sold with Morse tapers and then obviously made with this type of a collar that goes right onto the quill of the drill press. Now I do not have the coupler that would be required, almost like a magneto type of coupler. So I'm going to sacrifice this for the good of the cause. So what you would do here is to remove the entire chuck and this collar portion and then this would attach along with that coupling device that I just talked about. Now this is not the right diameter for this quill but I looked through the catalog and they sold this with many many different sizes. This would reduce the overall height of this by quite a bit and probably make it more rigid so that, and there's probably other reasons but it would be difficult and time consuming to mount and dismount. Alright I took the depth stop off now this video might be a total failure in that if I cannot show you what I want to show you through a window here I probably will have to give up and then of course you will never have seen this so you wouldn't know the difference one way or another but what I plan on doing here, and I've already outlined it in red here, is to cut a relatively large window out on the milling machine. This is aluminum. But when I do that, it's still not going to show you very much. You're just going to see that, that drive cone. So I will have to cut that out as well. And then I hope you can see at least some of the parts. It won't do any good at all to cut in here. Nothing would be observable and very little if anything will be seen if I would cut this out and you'll see why once I take it apart. Now I think I'll take this apart now right now yes right now 
and I'm going to do that on camera and in uh, fast motion perhaps four times or something if you can stand it otherwise advance a minute or two and here we go I'm ready to start the cutaway, but I am very tentative, but I plan on cutting two windows out. Can you see the red marker there? I'm going to leave a pillar here, like they do in mining sometimes. They leave a pillar so the whole thing won't collapse. But I do need to take out the planetary gears. Remember that this is the sun gear, this is the ring gear, and these are the planetaries and this gives it a it doubles the speed when you reverse it or back the tap out for maximum productivity but I do think I need to take these out I've already got them loosened they're a little bit awkward I don't want chips to get in there or possibly hit them with the uh, milling cutter I've always been fascinated by planetary gears ever since my dad brought me home a Model T planetary system and explained it to me although at that time I would have preferred it if he would have brought home a Hershey male Hershey that is that is the lubrication system I may cut part of this out I don't know I haven't decided yet I'm very indecisive have you ever noticed that but anyway now I'm ready to go ahead and put this in the bridge short and cut that out and I'll show you probably some uh, some scenes from that but not bore you with the entire process Well, it looks something like that. Matter of fact, it looks exactly like that. And I don't know if I really need another window or should I have just made this one a little bit longer. Like I said, I can't decide. But I think I will right now. I know I will. I'm going to cut the other window, but I won't show that. Too much repetition. You know what? This is kind of fun, exciting, but I'm scared. And it looks like that so far. But doing a preliminary assembly here, you can see that you really can't see a blame thing, can you? So what I need to do probably is cut a window in this. And this is, I forgot what this is called. Oh, it's the drive shell. Look at, they marked it at the factory. So I'm going to cut that out. Now I can only go down as far as that because the ring gear is here. I don't want to hit the ring gear, of course. And I'm still not so sure what this is all going to show other than you will see the clutch inside of there. But still, what does that tell you? I don't know. 
So I will cut this out off camera. You don't need to see that. It's going to take a lot longer than this because this is aluminium and this is steel. You know, I had second thoughts. I'm not going to show you the cutting, but I will show you the setup here. I really can't hold this and clamp it in the vise like this because I need to clamp in here. This could break off. They're just too, well, it's aluminum. It could break off. So I made this little parallel with a slot in it that fits on those lugs. And when I put this in the vise and tighten the vise, you can see I'm not in any way pressurizing that bearing or the aluminum, uh, whatever you call that thing. So now I'm ready to cut. Okay, let's take it out, see what we got. I never did take that washer out, but I thank goodness I didn't damage it. Let me clean it up real well and I'll see you at the bench. Okay, this is what I've got so far. Two windows here. Now I put this plate with the planetary gears in there just temporarily. And I'm not going to put these pieces into place yet. But you can see when I install this. Now this is going to spin around, and you're not going to have that good a view, if any, of the gears. And maybe we never will, because they're pretty well hidden in there. But I think what I'd like to do is open up this bottom part just a little bit here. Now I'll lose this hole here. Now that's a weep hole for any extra oil that has been used will drip down there and be uh, absorbed by that felt wherever I put it probably lost it already and then the excess would weep out of there so it's a weep hole is what it is so I think I'm going to cut that out well then there's still going to be a blockage so I will probably not probably I will cut out a portion of this plate that can probably be done with the saw. Let's have one more view before I do that. Remember that the follow-up video, part two, I'll actually talk about how it works. Now I'm really talking just about how I'm making the cutaway. Okay, what this window allows us to see is the clutch. Now the double cone here, made of cork, is actually the clutch. And this is the reverse shell that I'm pushing up on. It's spring-loaded. And when we push down on the work, that clutch is pushed up into this uh, cone up here by my index finger. All right, let me work on this, and I'll get back to you. I don't th believe I'm going to show any of that. I know I keep saying that, and then I actually do show you. Well, there's the uh, weem a whip a weem a whip a weem a whip a weep hole taken out of there. And I notched this carrier. I'm going to call this a carrier for the planetaries. So let me go ahead and assemble this, and let's see what it looks like, or what a fella can actually see, or is this an abject failure? Well, I'll have to admit there's a beautiful view now of the planetaries, isn't there? Now notice here that the planetaries are only engaged when we are reversing the thing, that is, backing it out, which the tap pulls it down in the work, and then the planetaries are engaged, and that's a two-to-one ratio. But, when I put this on, does everything disappear? Okay, here's what it looks like put together. There is somewhat of a view of the planetary gear system. You can see the ring gear, and if you have optivisors on and a strong flashlight, you can see the uh, sun gear and just a little peek at the planetary gears. 
Well, that completes the cutaway. I still got a few screws to put in. But that completes this very, very long part one. So in part two, be sure and watch it, I'm going to attempt to explain what is happening in here as we tap with this thing. Now stand by for lots and lots of still pictures of the tap procunior tapping equipment brochure and the patent and a few things like that. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.